Abstract Factory is a creation of patterns, so it's a pattern to create objects, the same as factory method pattern. The objective here is to create related objects without specifying their concrete classes. Imagine you have a games industry or a group of game factories. Then a client enters your factory and says he wants the available games you have. The client just wants to have fun, so it doesn't really matter what's the game you provide, the only requirement is to be a game. You have many families of game factories in your group, you sell board games, card games, and video games. So in your code, we will need to represent the families of the related objects and create classes like video game, card game, and board game. But what if you need more variants for those games? After all, every game has its own characteristics. Maybe your board game is a survivor horror game, so it will have the method scare. If your game is for some motorsport, it will have the method crash and so far so on. But soon you'll see that it's not scalable and your classes will blow it up. You need a way to create objects that match other objects of the same family without bloating up the classes and respecting the single responsibility principle. So in other words, an actual game is not the same as a terror game or a board game of survival horror is not the same as survival horror video game or Zombicide is not Resident Evil. This abstract factory pattern suggests to declare explicitly the interfaces for each distinct product factories of each product family in other words, declarations for each family type, like board game, card game, and video game, and their respective implementations. Uh, for example, tarot board game, fantasy card game, action video game, and so far so on. Then you can create an abstract factory that will be responsible to call the concrete factories. That will then create the concrete products. All right, that's very beautiful, but how to implement it? You start by creating an abstract class that will be responsible to encapsulate the common behaviors for all the product types. Here I'm calling it game. Then you create other abstract classes that will be responsible to encapsulate the common behaviors for each product type. For example, terror board game that extends game may have panic method. Horror board game may have the method scare and so on. Now create a concrete classes that will be used by our factories to create the game objects. Each class will have their specificities and the common properties in the game class. Create an abstract games factory interface that will shape our factories that will have methods for all the product families we have available. And now we can create the concrete factories that are going to be responsible to generate the game objects. And now our clients can use the game factory to get the game that he wants. So about the pros. First one is isolation of concrete classes. Um, this pattern is particularly useful when the client doesn't know or doesn't need to know exactly what type to create. So the clients will only have access to methods that are concerned to them. In this case, each client will have access to the method play, which is the only one that matters to them. It also makes it easy to exchange product families. If you ever need to change the product families, let's say you don't need any more Terra Game Factory and you want to use Fantasy Games Factory, everything will fit in because the methods are interchangeable and have the same signature. Your client will never know you changed them because what's going to be returned is always going to be the same. And it also promotes consistency among products. So when the product objects in the family are designed to work together, it's important that an application use objects from only one family at a time. The abstract factory pattern makes this easy to enforce. About accounts, this pattern makes it difficult to support new kinds of products. So extending abstract factories to produce new kinds of products isn't easy. Uh, that's because the abstract factory interface fixes the set of products that can be created. So supporting new kinds of products require extending the factory interface, which involves changing the abstract factory class and all its subclasses. So it's really a pain. For the related patterns, we have the factory method, which I created a video about it. I'm going to link on the cards. And there's also the builder pattern and the prototype pattern. They are all creational patterns and I'm going to cover them in the future. And that's basically it for the abstract factory pattern. I have all the code from the design pattern series available on GitHub in the pinned comment below. So if you are interested in more design patterns or coding tips in general, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and hit the bell please. 
And that's it, folks. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.